I went to a meeting on this topic several years ago and a man stood up and told us that the wildlife would all leave. All we'd ever see was a crow occasionally and they would never come back and the fish were leaving Saginaw Bay. My research for the last several years has been on the impact that wind turbines have had on rural communities. What I found was that in communities that had wind farms, those people that were receiving wind farm income were more likely to say that they were going to pass their farm on to a child or that they had developed a succession plan and they knew who they were going to pass their farm on to. I think animals have senses that humans do not. I mean, if the animals were scattering and they were looking and they were trembling, I'd say, uh oh, there's something to that. I have seen none of that from domestic or wild animals. When I was hunting last year, deer came out practically underneath the thing, never paid a bit of attention to it. In farmland preservation, we worry about taking land out of agriculture. Um, and so you would hope that people aren't building new homes. But in fact, in these communities, we are seeing new homes being built. But more often, it's grandma and grandpa farmer who are now receiving wind turbine income, building a ranch next to their farmhouse. That is turbine number 47. It is in my farmland in a field, yes. Because they've got kids or grandkids moving into the farmhouse, and they want to age in place, but in, you know, one-story building rather than a two-story farmhouse. In the 2008 time frame, we expected wind to be quite expensive. When the first wind contract came in at about $115 a megawatt hour, we were ecstatic. We thought that that was uh, a wonderful price. And the price has continued to decline. And we have heard of wind contracts in the last year of $45 per megawatt hour. Both the direct economic benefits and the indirect economic benefits are substantial and counties, local governments, townships, uh, local schools receive a lot of monetary support from wind project development. Huron County and Gratiot County, for instance, which are number one and number two in terms of wind development, have received uh, in just two years about $45 million in tax revenues to, flowing to counties townships, schools, and other community services. The communities benefit um, locally, economically, from those renewable resources, and so we're actually seeing um, the home values reflect that. The most comprehensive research on property values um, and how property values are affected by local wind facilities uh, was done on a nationwide scale in many, many different states, many home transactions designed to look at all the various uh, aspects of a home or a property that might influence value. So do you have an updated kitchen? Do you have a pool? Do you, what's your square footage? Uh, how modern is the home? Uh, do you have wood floors, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And one of those aspects is proximity to a wind farm. And what this study showed, again, across tens of thousands of transactions of homes or home sales, uh, is that statistically speaking, we did not find a, a positive or negative influence uh, of wind turbines on property values. People say, oh, well, the wind, doesn't, the wind doesn't blow all the time, the sun doesn't shine all the time. Yes, but the wind does blow all the time somewhere. And that's something that grid balancers do. We have very good forecasting tools that allow them to figure out where will we be seeing the resources when. And then how do we work that part of the grid into um, where we're going to have demand. Through the survey, I was also able to ask people um, how much they were investing in different aspects of their farming operation over the previous five years. So I asked about their home and drainage and irrigation, um, their outbuildings and equipment. And what I found was that people with wind turbines on their property were investing twice as much than people without wind turbines on their property. So it's really helping to um, preserve farming communities, keeping people on the farms, keeping young people on the farms, and helping diversify farm income. I know some people who now will be more content to continue to own their land and they'll just rent it out. Before the rent might not have been enough and they'd have sold the farm. Now they're going to keep the farm because this just makes it nice. They have five, fifteen thousand dollars that they can uh, put in their cash flow for a winter home in Florida or whatever they need to do, pay their taxes like everybody else. Of the Fortune 100 companies in the United States, 71 of them have renewable energy goals. And their goals are not 15% like Michigan's RPS. Their goals are 80%. Their goals are 100% renewables. 
They are General Motors. They are Ford. They are Dow. They are he- uh, Steelcase. They are Herman Miller. You know, Steelcase, for example, is at 100% renewable goal for years now. These are companies that are homegrown Michigan companies as well as national companies that want to locate here. These companies are interested in jobs of the future and employment of the future, but they're only going to do that if they've also got a grid of the future. And no one, no, none of these companies would ever put out a press release about 15% renewables. We are the Great Lakes State. We have this incredible natural resource endowment, this globally unique Great Lakes system, the largest freshwater system in the world. And we are acclimated to the fact that there are limitations on the fish that you can eat from this incredible resource because of mercury, half of which comes from coal power plants. We live with the decades of a, a legacy of restrictions on the amount of fish that can be caught and consumed, um, but we don't have to anymore because we have better energy choices. I have evidence that in these farming communities, um, a younger generation of farmers is staying on the farm. This is a way for them to diversify their farm income. So younger farmers see this as not such a risky business. They know that they're going to have a guaranteed revenue stream for the next 20 years um, that's drought proof. Um, And so they see this as an opportunity.